Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Rick Nabb, director of the National Hurricane Center, coming to you live from Miami with our noon Eastern time update on Hurricane Sandy that is centered uh, about 250 miles off to the southeast of the Carolina coastline. And because we're currently experiencing tropical storm conditions, for example, in uh, eastern North Carolina. That just gives you an idea of how large the system is and why it's so important not to just focus on where the center of circulation is, but on what impacts are affecting you or what could affect you. The large size of Sandy is going to mean several things that you need to be aware of. Number one is that the weather will go downhill along the mid-Atlantic and northeastern uh, coastal areas and then inland uh, well in advance of the circulation center going near or over your location. And you could experience long periods of very bad weather, even if the center never comes anywhere near you, just as the folks in North Carolina are currently experiencing. Larger tropical cyclones, and this is a hurricane right now, category one winds of 75 miles an hour. Larger hurricanes are much more capable of producing a life-threatening storm surge than smaller ones are. And that is one of the hazards we're very concerned about here. So let's focus on that for the moment we could see water levels above ground level of four to eight feet due to the combination of storm surge and tide anywhere from about uh, Ocean City, Maryland to the Connecticut, Rhode Island border of four to eight feet above ground level. Somewhere in those areas, it could be that high, especially right near the coastline, again, above ground level. And then within that area, there's a region where we are forecasting six to 11 feet of storm surge and tide produced flooding above ground level in Long Island Sound, uh, the New York Harbor, New York City area, and uh, you know, this general area of coastline that is shaped in such a way that it captures the water being pushed near the coastline uh, along the northern side of the circulation. There are other areas like the southern facing uh, areas of Massachusetts, all the way down in North Carolina, also experiencing either storm surge right now or the threat of it down the road. So because storm surge is such a life-threatening hazard, we urge you to follow whatever instructions emergency managers, local officials are giving you because evacuating from the storm surge hazard is the best way uh, to ensure your safety. That is a very life-threatening situation. The other hazards we're contending with are the rainfall and the wind. And along our forecast path, because it's going to take this left-hand turn uh, and then go inland, a large number of people in the mid-Atlantic and northeastern states could experience either hurricane force winds along the coast or tropical storm force winds coast and well inland. And those wind strong winds could last for many, many hours. Freshwater flooding is also a significant risk, coastal areas and inland due to heavy rainfall, which could measure up to a foot in some places. Flash flooding on short time frames could occur. That's a good reason to stay off the roads in these areas for the next uh, couple days at least. And then uh, after the rain falls, we could have river flooding and in complex terrain, uh, mountainous areas like uh, New York and Vermont, New Hampshire, for example, uh, those areas if they get heavy rain, very prone to flooding, enhanced by the terrain. So a number of hazards to contend with. And again, don't focus too much on the fact that this could become a post-tropical system before making landfall. That's not going to change the fact that this large system, Sandy, very capable of producing several life-threatening hazards over a very large area. 